On the floor, reading the Gonzaga players, their backs were all turned, and with their backs turned, he took it right to the paint. And I told you in the pregame show that he's a guy that loves to drive to the basket, and that's his first option, and did a nice job on that possession. Idaho took just four free throws in that first half. Hobson, his first of the game. 48-13. Idaho goes to a 1-2-2 half-court press. Gets a turnover out of it. There's Wiley. Watson, nice finish. Good ball movement. That time the turnover was caused because Zags didn't again another turnover. The ball's pushed up again, and Watson's going to finish this one. Heitfeld goes down hard, and he picks up the personal foul. So Idaho showing some life here to open up the second 20 minutes. Well, they come out in a 1-2-2 diamond kind of a half-court press, and it's caused two turnovers on the Zags, and that's because the Zags really lazy with the basketball. First half, they really passed the ball, moved it around. The two turnovers came from Matt Bolden on the our side of the floor. You know, lazily making a pass down to the corner, stolen by Hobson, down for a basket. This time, Pargo takes it over into the corner, and instead of attacking the zone, he kind of just dribbles lazily across, allowed the double team, and got another turnover, and now two free throws by Watson. He hit the first one. And again, you see the one, two, two. Making the Zags. Now Jeremy should attack right now. Attack dribble to the middle. To the middle or throw the ball up the sideline and keep the ball moving. That's how you beat the zone. You want the zone to go one side, overload it, and then quickly move the ball to the other side. Usually get an open shot. There's a good example right there. Day misses. He didn't miss many in that first half. Five of nine. Now for the game, Watson finishes. How about Watson getting out, putting his track shoes on, getting a couple of fast breaks, a couple of baskets. So Idaho scored just 11 points in the first 20 minutes. They've got eight here, and we're not even two minutes into the second half. So Don Verlin has to be happy about how his Vandals have come out of the locker room. Gonzaga is still up big, but the Vandals are fighting. 48-19 our score. Mark Few beginning his 10th season as the head coach at Gonzaga. And this graphic is going to give you an idea of how successful he's been here. Already he's number five after 10 seasons as his 10th season begins at 237 wins. You can see who's in front of him. Jerry Tarkanian, Danny Crum. Those two are going to go down in the before December's over with only Everett Case and Roy Williams in front of him. Pretty amazing, Craig. It's absolutely astronomical what he's done in 10 seasons and, you know, been at GU over 20 total years as an assistant and now 10 as a head coach. So he's been here a long, long time. Stephen Gray, the three ball. And that might get Stephen going. That one came off his hand really nicely. One of four now behind the arc. Well, I got to tell you, every coach will tell you coming out of halftime, the first three minutes are probably the most important part of the game. You want to establish and set the tone for the rest of the game. Idaho has beaten Gonzaga in the first couple of minutes here. And Gonzaga's got to respond with some tough defense and good offense. Hobson misses. And a foul called on Josh Heitfeld. So Josh picks up two quick ones here in the second half after playing foul free in the first half. And when you build up a comfortable lead, it, it can't help but get a little complacent, right? I mean, that's just a natural human instinct in, in all of us in sports that uh, go through that. But if it happens, you want to come out of it as quickly as you can. And hopefully that shot on the offensive end by Stephen Gray will do that. What a bucket by Mac Hobson. Both Day and Heitfeld had opportunities to block that shot. And Hopson put it up out of their reach. Yeah, it, it's kind of deceiving on his quickness and just gets into the paint against Austin Day and gets his body closer to the rim. 
And Austin wasn't good enough or long enough to uh, block the shot, and Heifelt uh, was out of position too. And Hobson throws it in off the backboard for a three-point play. And with the three-point play, Idaho now has already equaled their first half point total here in the second half. Less than three minutes in. It's a very good sign for him, don't you think? Hey, this world's about progress, right? Not it, perfection. It is. Heitfeld. Nice high-low game from Austin Day to Josh Heitfeld. And again, another bread-and-butter play for Gonzaga is right there, what you just saw, high-low. And Josh Heitfeld doing a nice job of sealing and getting that pass down from uh, Austin at the high post. Simmons, open three. And he bangs that through. So Idaho looking much good, much better on the offensive end as Stephen Gray makes him pay at the other end. Should point out it wasn't a three on this end by Simmons, just a two. He was inside the line, okay. And then uh, what a great job by Jeremy Pargo. They work on this in practice almost every day to warm up with. Push the ball ahead. If someone's up ahead of you, give it to him. Make the defense react to it. Golden with a deflection. Pargo runs it down. Here's Heitfeld. Well, Augusto was hoping for the foul, and Heitfeld just deposited it. Augusto's got to stay on his feet. If you're going to challenge Josh Heitfeld, I'd rather challenge him on my feet than on my back. That kind of epitomizes the flop. <laughs> Watson, kick out, Wiley, jumper, no good. Fargo with a rebound. Austin Day calling for it on the post. Heitfeld shoots the three off the front of the rim. It'll stay with Gonzaga when we come back. Idaho playing much better here in the second half. But Josh Heitfeld starting to get it going. He's got 12 with the easy two. 15-18 to play. 15 18 to play. Number nine, Gonzaga is still with a large lead over the University of Idaho. Greg Heister and Craig Elo. And let's take a look at Craig's eggs. You like that, don't you? All right, here we go. He established the inside out game. They've done that. 22 points in the paint led by Josh Heifelt. And it's not rocket science. When you go inside, it opens up the perimeter game. And there's 44% on the three point shooting tonight. Uh, of 8 8 18 and then the solid D for 40. Hey, I'm gonna have to say they're slacking off here in the second half. I'm not real impressed with the defense coming out, and an offensive efficiency is definitely there. With only seven turnovers and 53% from the field. That means every possession down the floor, they're getting good shots. Foul called here on Watson. That's three on him. Yeah, that's like three minutes and 22 seconds. Idaho has scored 13 points. I should have said they're napping on the job right now to start the second half on defense. That's three team fouls here on Idaho. Micah Downs missed everything. Simmons open, rattled out. Day and Gray. And Downs had an opportunity at that rebound, and they lose it. You know, it's not a bad shot by Terrence Simmons. He's a 50% three-point shooter right now with only two games. But I tell you what, if there's any way to get back in this ball game, you got to knock down a few of those pretty quickly. And Terrence Simmons being one of the better shooters from three-point land for Idaho, he has the green light to shoot that. Well, they had just 24 attempts in that first half, so I'm sure Coach Verlin just wants him to get the ball up to the rim. Get something up there. And there's that anticipation that I was talking about on the defensive end. You know, you love guys that anticipate well, and Jeremy Pargo does it as well as anyone. Saw that pass. There's another great anticipation by Stephen Gray. Didn't get that one, but you like the way that they go after the, the angles of the passes, and they can read it and, and try to get a hand or deflect it or steal it. There's Augusto, shot blocked by Ira Brown. Wow, and Brown comes flying through the frame. It is something special. And again, that's defense. He came from the offside, the ball.